not just computing devices are connected, but objects, appliances are all connected, creating what we refer to as the Internet of Things. And that really is a network of physical objects, devices, where you have a very close integration between hardware and software, making it possible for you to interact and perform tasks in a way that was not possible before. And this is really revolutionary. It's not a trend. A lot of people describe this as the next digital revolution. We're currently in the fourth industrial revolution. Uh, a number of African countries were in some ways left behind during the first three revolutions. There is an opportunity for us because we don't have the baggage of legacy infrastructure. There's an op opportunity for us to really accelerate development by designing solutions based on new and cutting edge technologies to really help us um, advance development. And Still thinking about the Internet of Things, there are projections that by 2020, the world is going to look very different from what it is now. There's an expectation that there'll be 4 billion connected people. We would have over 25 billion embedded and intelligent systems, over 25 million apps, and so on and so forth. So more and more, we're moving towards connectedness, the internet of things, or as we call it now, the internet of everything. And this is possible really with Devices having first an identity, connectivity, some level of interoperability to be able to send messages and respond to commands. Some examples that we see, wearable devices. So we've gone from the mobile phone that we put in the pocket or uh, carry around to devices that we actually wear. And we see those even in Nigeria today. For example, you know, there are a number of people with iPhone watches or Android watches. Um, Solutions like Fitbits and other fitness applications are becoming very popular with the wearable gear. And we're seeing a lot more. And these are, you know, by, um, by nature, generally hands-free, always on, uh, connected, <laughs> and uh, attention-grabbing because they're with you all the time and uh, a lot more intuitive. And to see how far we can stretch this imagination and the possibilities, we now have what we call smart lenses. Again, talking about wearable devices, there is a project by uh, Google in collaboration with Novartis Pharmacy, which is really about embedding a chip in your contact lens that monitors your glucose, um, your blood sugar levels, right? For patients with diabetes, to make sure that you don't run the risk of uh, going low or too high on blood sugar. And even in the automotive space, we've seen a lot of uh, sensors and beacons um, embedded in the road, working together with car-based sensors that are used for hands-free hands driving. So I was at the World Economic Forum about three, three weeks ago in Kigali, and there was a lot of talk about smart cities particularly by the Northern Corridor, which is a coalition of the northern, uh, some northern countries in East Africa, Kenya, Sudan, Uganda, and Rwanda. And there was a lot of conversation about smart cities. Uh, basically, again, with the internet of, of things and the sophistication that now exists with um, sensors, we're able to establish platforms applications and services like tra tra uh, traffic management, environmental sensors, smart parking, water quality and conservation, and urban resilience. And we're starting to see some of these live right here in Africa. And McKinsey and Company actually uh, projected that the Internet of Things has the potential to impact the economy with $3.9 trillion and that would increase to $11.1 trillion by 2025. And that's an annual uh, economic contribution. So really, with the backing of investors, the potential in Africa is huge. 
And we're seeing disruption in a number of industries. Actually, um, it's applicable almost to any uh, industry today. For example, um, smart energy and mining, I think that's actually um, one of the most impacted industries to date. We're seeing sensors used to continuously monitor and de detect dangerous methane levels in mines to improve workplace safety. On the energy side, we're seeing um, power and utilities using internet-connected smart meters to measure power usage every, say, 15 minutes. And I actually saw I was um, part of uh, an entrepreneurial pitch competition in Lagos uh, a few months ago. And there was an entrepreneur that had developed a solution, um, I think it was Grid Systems, around being able to monitor your power usage. Uh, and that's a, a classic example. Also smart factories, so within the industrial sector, uh, a manufacturing plant uh, distributes plant monitoring and optimization tasks across several remote and interconnected control points. From a healthcare perspective, we're seeing a lot more cases of remote patient monitoring and personalized treatment where sensors are being used to actually detect levels around you know like oxygen um, blood sugar your pulse body temperature um, um, skin response and a number of other um, various human uh, vitals we're also seeing examples of tracking technologies used in vehicles, and we have many examples of that um, right here in Lagos. In South Africa, um, there's a lot of uh, um, progress around rolling out smart meters to, me to measure household utility usage in Johannesburg. And we're seeing more cases of the retail sector embracing what we call RFID tags, radio frequency identification tags, which um, really, th that's really about using intelligent barcodes to track items in a retail environment. These are some examples of things. Of course, there are certain challenges which are on the left, and then considerations when we talk about the Internet of Things, and those are on the right. First and foremost, we're talking about connectedness. Infrastructure is a basic requirement, right? And high speed, good quality broadband infrastructure. That's an area we still have a long way to, to go. And uh, that's a basic requirement if we're talking about uh, connectivity of things. And then capacity building as well, and that was mentioned this morning. Um, it's important to develop the skill set so that people can really build innovative applications. I talked about grid systems in one of the startup pitches that I attended. I've actually seen a few uh, solutions coming out of some of the tech hubs, like the co-creation hub, that are actually quite interesting and innovative and are speaking to and moving in the direction of the Internet of Things. And on the line strategy, to really because, uh, and somebody uh, alluded, to this, uh, alluded to this earlier this morning, um, we need to look, at, uh, look specifically at African challenges and problems and create unique solutions for them. So the recommendation is not to try to parachute a solution from the Western world into Africa. We have a unique opportunity to potentially leapfrog because like I said earlier, we don't necessarily have as much baggage with legacy systems. And so we can design with new technologies in mind, but there needs to be a very grounded strategy around what are the problems we're trying to solve and how, what's the design that is going to make a difference in government and in the private sector to really bring these to life. And of course, we need to be thinking about interoperability.